Hello guys and welcome to the Solo Arexel guide. This guide is mainly aimed at beginners to this new solo boss, which can also be geared, but it's mainly a solo boss. Uh, and it can also be used by those looking to improve because this guide will focus on the boss mechanics and effective ways to combat them rather than the best or most effective tactics to get fast kills. Although I'll throw some of those in as well because uh, I've got a decent number of kills under my belt now. Because this is a new boss, it's highly unlikely that I've captured all there is to know about it. So uh, please feel free to comment below with further tips and suggestions to help out your fellow scapers. And uh, I'll try to annotate them into the vid if I can. Before getting into the nitty gritty though, let's make sure you guys have the requirements to kill Arexor. The spider boss that everyone fears. I would highly recommend having level 90 weapons. High level armor, especially tank armor for your first kill, supports armor, and close to or maxed stats in defense and the style you're going to use to kill Arexor with, which should be anything except melee. You should also have a level 95 or better prayer, overloads, and a pack yak. It can be quite hard to get the first kill or the first few kills without these requirements, uh, but it's definitely possible to do it with level 80 weapons. Just that it will be a lot harder, especially if you haven't got any kills yet. If you have got kills, no problem whatsoever. But until you get a first kill, it's going to be very, very difficult to do it with level 80 weapons and armor. You'll find that once you get your first kill, as I said, it's a lot easier. And uh, even using a tortoise will cause little concerns. But yeah, until that point, these are my recommendations. It goes without saying that you should be very comfortable with your interface layout, action bar, key binds and general PVM in EOC. Level 92 agility is also extremely handy. Arexor is a level 2500, that's right 2500 because uh, Legacy has come out now, so the old combat calculation. Uh, and it's a solo or duo boss depending on what you want to do, most people do solo. Um, and he has around 400k life points split into four different phases with, e with each phase having 100k life points approximately. So he can heal quite a lot so it's likely that you'll be needing to, more, to do more damage than the 400k figure I've quoted but at the start of every phase um, he starts off with 100k life points. The unique thing about this boss is that you don't have to do a set number of things every time to progress through phases so like in QBD you have to do a certain amount of damage to progress um, and with Virago and with Nex as well so you can just leave some things to finish later if you want so for example you don't have to do 100k damage in the first phase but if you don't you'll have to do it later on let me just give you guys a quick rundown of the phases before we get started uh, on the main uh, tactics on top of doing 100k damage to him in each phase, you'll need to do the following. In the first phase, you'll have to burn down one of the two spider webs blocking the path to the second phase, and this takes a minute from when you start burning it. There are three possible paths, the top, middle and bottom, but only two are available at any given time. And this is really important because uh, obviously you can only choose out of these two, and this changes every three or four days roughly. The second phase is dependent upon the path path that you choose to go through. The top path is where Araxor will spawn 20 mini spiders with special abilities and he'll do this steadily throughout the phase and there'll be an icon on your screen showing how many he spawned and how many there are left. You don't have to kill them but the damage can add up and there are two particular types which will make you cry unless you kill them. Uh, so uh, yeah, the middle path has a pool of acid or poison uh, so make sure to bring anti-poison and you basically have to get Araxor to stand in it for a while uh, while DPSing on him of course as usual and then get him to move over to the end of that uh, area to a to a wall and make him stand there uh, up, up to the wall until the acid drips off him completely and the wall breaks down. He'll also spawn one of these deadly one-hitting bomb spiders so yeah, you better make sure you avoid those, unlike me. The bottom path is un unique, I'd say, uh, because you don't actually do any damage to Arexor, at least not directly. Um, the whole place goes dark, and you have to get to these sp spots 
uh, under beams of light to be safe from fast damage that increases the longer you spend outside those light circles uh, and it's typelet as well a bit like uh, one of the other attacks that I will tell you about later after three of these light beams spawn uh, you'll get a message saying Araxos gets ready to come down from the ceiling by the way when he's in the ceiling he'll also do some range and mage attacks randomly so uh, look out for those after three light beams as I said uh, if you walk towards the wall at the end of the arena uh, the same direction uh, as you would if you were in path 2 you'll get a slow-mo cutscene where you can dodge his cool looking attack and slowly get him to break down the wall once he does that you just go through the third phase is when the remaining health after the first and second phases carries through so you didn't, if you didn't finish off Araxor during those two phases and you just decided to plow through you'd be in for a long phase but obviously if you chose the bottom path you wouldn't have to do 200k damage just because you couldn't uh, kill Araxor in the second phase. Um, in this phase, in this third phase, you simply do as much damage as possible but he also frequently does the special effects from phase 2 of the two paths open that day not just the one you went through so for example when I'm making this video only the middle and bottom paths are open so he'll do the special effects of both of those so he'll spawn a uh, bomb spiders and he will also darken the room uh, he also spawns highly acidic spiders regardless of which paths are open and you can lure these onto him to make the last phase a little easier uh, by the time you get there. This time you'll actually have to get his bar to zero though. Um, usually you don't, I'll tell you that later as well. Uh, and in phase 4 he gets replaced by a spider called Araxi that attacks quickly using mage and range. And I'll leave the details for the end because uh, it's really intense again. Only if it's your first or first kills, usually not though. So the gearing setup section of this guide. As I talked about earlier, you want to get the best armor you can and the best weapons you can. Ideally you want to be getting tank armor for your first kill but I've got DPS armor because I'm pretty experienced. But it doesn't really matter too much because Araxor's attacks are pretty accurate anyway. Um, but it, it can be quite helpful. Now I've got uh, War Priest gloves because um, I want to keep 5 degradable items on death. Um, don't want any degradable items in my grave when I die so uh, that's why I've got those otherwise I'd have ascension grips um, as far as uh, the rest are concerned well pretty self-explanatory high DPS necklace uh, you can use dragon rider amulet uh, I've got this this is extremely useful uh, so try and get this ring of vigor if you can uh, scrimshaw you can swap it out for a sign of life or sign of item protection if you can't make these and as for the inventory, this is standard to be honest, you want uh, around 10 brews, maybe a bit less um, in your inventory, appropriate amount of restores, obviously these two, um, this shield is extremely helpful uh, once you get a little bit more experienced uh, to heal. That can save you at times, um, it's not very useful if you have any, if you have rock tail suits, but it's worth it if you have rock tails in terms of how much LP it can heal. Um, per, per inventory space and stuff like that so I would definitely have that um, it can save you the first time because it heals 50 extra LP anti-poison of course uh, as for my rhino well same sort of similar sort of thing so loads of bruise uh, you want to use up your bruise at the start of the kill for P4 you want to save as much normal food as possible I've got a few items uh, sign put no portents of uh, restoration which can save me as well so uh, that's about that I guess. Uh, as for my action bar, well I want to be able to spam brew so that's in a convenient position um, and well I'll t well, this is how you get there by the way so this is a wall you need 92 agility for um, and the hive is around here otherwise you have to go all the way around here as you can see on the mini map uh, and then around here that's why you need 92 agility to make it a little bit faster so yeah uh, the rest of my action bar, well these two are really important so I have those. Uh, you can just use um, ultimates from here so you don't really need it. And these two prior switching uh, ability bar slots are really really useful for P4 so I highly recommend you have those. And surge can be useful, not really uh, that necessary but still. Uh, graveyards here as well, you could have entered it uh, by right clicking. Um, something important to say about the graves are that is that sometimes your grave will uh, degrade a spider will cause it to 
uh, get shorter by 15 seconds uh, every few seconds so just be aware of that so make sure you have a good grave timer now you can make uh, an instance here I could have entered it if there was no one in here but I can't enter it now as you can see um, you can also choose whether to have a friend there um, obviously otherwise I'd have to start a new custom session or find a free world 200k coins for an hour or until you leave the instance unless there's someone holding the instance for you in that case it's 200 coin, 200k for an hour okay now I am ready for the fight let me just talk you guys through phase one um, so obviously enter as soon as you can you have 10 seconds before a duo partner can join you if they want to. Now, I'm prepared to lobby here because if it's anything other than a mage, well, it's a mage. Uh, so if it was anything other than a mage, Arax or Spawn, then I would lobby because otherwise it'd be quite difficult for your first try. Uh, I would do it personally, but uh, if it was you, no, I wouldn't do it. So as soon as you start, uh, burn down a web. Okay, that was its first special attack. Burn down a web. I'll tell you more about that. So uh, it does a special attack, uh, which it does throughout this phase as well as all the other phases. Every five normal hits, these are its normal hits. So every five normal hits, it does a special attack. And this is its second one, uh, basically a shield around it. So it heals every few seconds, 1k, unless you hit it. If you hit it, it reflects some of the damage back to you. And this reflection increases uh, with something called the rage meter, which I'll show you later on. So that was its second attack. Now, if I use anticipation, I can avoid or make it easier for myself from some of the attacks there. He uses swipe attack again. That swipe attack can one hit you potentially if you're in melee distance. And um, before, when I was in melee distance, I tried to run away, as you could see. So that's another way of avoiding it. Otherwise, you can um, you can use anticipation of freedom to make sure he doesn't drag you in. Uh, otherwise he will drag you in and you'll have to run back out now he's done that attack again as you can see so yeah okay so usually what I would do if I wasn't speaking so quickly was just DPS out this phase because it's really quick if you do that so um, yeah and make sure to use anticipation or freedom every fifth normal attack so that he doesn't do that now he hasn't shown me his third special attack yet uh, which is really um, quite annoying you'll have to spam click out but again, it can be made better if you use freedom. You have to time it though, so you have to use freedom at the right possible time. Now, a way of healing from this web attack is to use uh, fragmentation shot and then put a shield on and then resonance. There you go, can you see that? So that was how I did that. Um, you can also use shadow tendrils or snipe to do that. Um, so that's really useful, I guess, but not really advanced as such. Again, uh, around the fifth attack there. Now he pulled me in, did you see that? If I didn't run back out, if I didn't spam, spam click back out, then he would have hit me for quite a bit of damage, potentially one hitting me. And if he had anything other than a rhino, it would also hit that, uh, especially a pack yak. So yeah. Okay, he's done that attack again. Again, I can do this. Okay, I'm not the best at it, but still, um, it's better than nothing. Try not to attack him though. Um, when he does that now he hasn't done the last special attack which i'm really surprised about i forgot to activate my scrimshaw there we go um so that's really surprising okay that's his last attack now all you do is uh, spam click out he does a little bit of damage every few seconds um if you didn't use anticipation or freedom that would have been much slower because um you'd have to have spammed out for a lot yeah you'd have to spam the ground for a lot longer before you could get free uh, so that's why i love using those and Try and use them every five normal attacks, as you can see. And there's nothing much more to it. Uh, use death swiftness as much as possible, and then, um, and you know, use the adrenaline part, get up to threshold, and then use the threshold and do a lot of damage. And that's it. Don't get him down to zero though, because otherwise he'll be heal back up to five k. Now I'm ready to go to the next area, so let's do that. This is the bottom path. Okay, one thing you need to know before we move on is. The meter called the Rage Meter, which you can find on the middle to the top of your screen when the fight starts, if you've killed Araxor before during that day, or you'll find it later on in the fight anyway. This indicates how much more damage you can do in general with those attacks. I'll talk about ways in which this can go up as it discusses mechanics, but basically for every kill you do within a day, the base value, which is the value when the kill starts, goes up by 15% from 0%, up to a maximum of 150% if you've done 10, 10 kills before reset. If you choose to go to the top path for phase 2, 
uh, then I'll say that it's unique in that it's the only path where you can move around and be unhindered by the environment. So you can move back to f the phase one area, for example, if you really want to make it a little easier, in my opinion. You can also go straight to phase three if you really want as well, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Look out for a fourth special attack from now on, uh, which will occur in the same way as the other three that you could that I showed you from phase one. Basically, Araxor throws a slow moving fireball at you and drops either two or three eggs bunched together on the floor. You can choose to load the fireball at the eggs, you have a few seconds to do that, and then blow them up for a bit of damage to you uh, and killing off those eggs. And it will also increase his rage, I think, by 4% or so. Uh, but you can choose not to do that and just take the fireball. Uh, you'll get hit 3k damage and the spiders will spawn and attack you. I'd go for the first option though, uh, and also the special for this phase is that uh, he spawns 20 spiders like those that I just talked about uh, throughout the fight. Kill them as soon as you can, and you can check how many you've got left by hovering your mouse over an icon next to the rage meter. The two really important ones you have to kill ASAP are the mirror back spider, which will reflect all the damage you do to Araxor back onto you, so you really do want to kill them. Kill that one first, and uh, he also spawns a pulsing spider which heals him 5k LP every few seconds. So, really keep your eyes peeled for those. You can choose to kill all the spiders in this phase, or move on to the next phase, phase 3, and tackle them there. Uh, but remember that Araxel will still do all his phase 1 attacks regularly, and you, you still want to take down his 100k LP, otherwise, you'll have to deal with it later on. For the middle path, the main objective is to get Araxor over these over this acid pool. And uh, when he goes on top of the, top of the acid pool, his um, there'll be a bar above where his rage meter is, and that bar will need to go to fifty percent. So you'll need to stay in the acid pool until then. Two things will happen. Um, one, he will melee you as well as his normal attack, which is mage in this instance. And two, he'll do uh, he'll do a special attack. On top of it, all his special attacks where, where he'll spawn some eggs on the floor and a fireball and you have to go to the eggs and blow up the eggs with the fireball on you. Um, and he will also spawn a spider. Uh, it's the one hitting bomb spider that I like to call it. And he can be warned of this a few seconds in advance by him throwing, a, throwing some acid spit on the floor. And it'll take a few seconds after that acid spit um uh, is on the floor uh, before the spider spawns and walks slowly towards you. It has a timer above it and um, it will blow up automatically after that timer uh, reaches maximum. Uh, but if it hits you before then, you are dead. So make sure you avoid it. Now, his bar is uh, the green bar above um, his rage meter is at 50%. So I lowered him all the way to the end wall. Now what happens is that the acid that he took will slowly drip onto the platform and degrade it and once that rage uh, that acid meter goes back to zero um, as long as he's on the top not no not in the middle but right at the top next to the wall um, when he's there and the acid meter goes to zero then uh, the phase is over he'll do his normal attacks and uh, as you can saw I sort of failed uh, trying to dodge the swipe attack uh, but usually what you would uh, do is because your back is to the wall over here you will try you can try and surge uh, forward or run forward right because you can't run back to avoid it and you'll still need to avoid uh, the acid spider the bomb spider as well as the other three uh, special attacks from the first phase so watch out for that and once you're done you can move on you can choose whether to uh, take off all his LP before uh, he degrades the platform or you can take care of the remaining LP in the next phase up to you. Okay, so I just noticed that I was dying way too much to this swipe attack, uh, especially in phase two. Uh, so what I recommend doing, and like what I'm doing here, is try and get a yak and turn off the option to click on it uh, using the interface settings and also stand a few steps b below the wall. Uh, so not right up to the wall, so you can move back to the wall when he does swipe you. Or what you can do is go right up to the wall and then surge down the wall so that you're standing on the other side of the wall while Araxo is still on the top of the wall so that when he swipes you can just move downhill rather than your back being against the wall and you not being able to move. So that's a really good tip. This is probably the easiest path to take if you can take it. So please try and do that if you're a beginner. 
Uh, so basically what happens is Araxor goes to the top so you actually can't damage him throughout the whole phase and you have to go to these spots of light that appear uh, throughout the tunnel. Now, uh, the longer you stay out of these spots of lights, the more damage you get, so try and get into them as soon as possible. Use Surge if they're really far away and so on. And Araxor will attack from the ceiling, but you can't attack him back. He'll attack with Mage in range, regardless of what phase he is in, when he st uh, what style he used uh, when he started out the fight. And you'll also need to lure the fireballs into the, into the eggs if you want uh, to make sure the spiders don't, uh, don't spawn. Now, after every three spots of light, as you saw there, uh, he will he will uh, do a cutscene where basically he'll move his legs in slow motion, and uh, you will need to dodge the attack using the keys on your keyboard. And if you do it completely right, you'll only need to do this twice before you can uh, break down the wall on the far end, the east end of the tunnel, and uh, you can move on to the next phase without actually doing any damage to him. If you do it incorrectly, you may have to do it as mu as many as uh, well, quite a few times. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's basically how this phase works. Now, um, once you've done that, you can move on to the next area for phase three. But let me just quickly show you uh, what the attacks look like and how what buttons you need to press. So here, his legs are coming to the left, so you click the left arrow on your key. Here, it's doing it to the right, so you click your right arrow. And uh, here it's going, you need to click the up arrow, it's not very clear. And finally here you need to do the down arrow, so that's basically it. So for phase 3 he will use the special attacks from the two paths that are open that, that week, uh, well that rotation. As you saw there he just threw out an acid spit on the floor and uh, the bomb spider will spawn from it. So you just need to watch out for that, uh, but this was in the rotation where the middle path was open. If the middle path isn't open that week, then he won't do that. In general, in this phase, he will uh, do attacks a little bit faster than he did in phase one and two, and the spiders above him will heal him for the average of the LP he had remaining in, in phase one and phase two. So just watch out for that, make sure you know why he's healing, uh, don't panic if he's healing. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the main thing. And within the fight, he will spawn these highly acidic spiders, which are completely harmless to you. Um, don't worry ab about them until you get Erexor down to almost dead. Um, I'll tell you why later. But um, basically, throughout the phase, make sure you use, uh, you know, devotion and debilitate just to reduce the damage he does on you. Look out for the special attacks and also those normal special attacks that he does uh, between five auto attacks. Obviously they will occur a little bit more frequently than they did in phase one just because he attacks a little bit more quickly. And yeah, just look out for those uh, attacks. Make sure you're aware of the attacks of the special attacks of the path you haven't been through this week. So for example, if you've only been through the middle path, and the bottom path is open as well. Make sure you know the attack, which is the, that he will uh, darken the room and make um, a spot of light spawn in a random part of the room and you need to go in it to stop being damaged. If it's too far away, obviously, then ignore it because it won't be worth going there. And obviously look out for the cocoon web attack where you can heal off it by using a shield and stuff like snipe and bombardment. That is really useful as well. And keep looking out for his special attacks, keep looking out for, um, you know, five auto attacks. And in general, this phase isn't really that much different to phase one. Um, but once he gets to low health, as you can see, you need to lure the spiders, highly acidic spiders into him. And the reason you do this is that in the last phase, this will make the last phase a little bit easier. Um, but by doing this, doing doing this during this phase it will make it a little bit harder by increasing his rage but uh, that means his rage in the last phase won't be very high so it will be a little bit easier for you if you do that and he'll heal 5k every time you do that as well so remember that use your um, ultimates um, 
make sure you uh, go to the light spots. Uh, he'll do the egg attack a lot more often if the top path is open. So also if you load the fireballs into the eggs. And that's pretty much it for this phase. Uh, as soon as the phase is over, he'll do a cutscene and we shall get into the fourth phase, the main point of this guide, the most important part of this guide, shall we say. Now, as far as I'm aware, uh, it's really hard to get out of the cutscene if you haven't done your first kill yet. Uh, but if you have done uh, your first kill or a few kills, I think you can just get out of it automatically. But when you do get out of it, make sure you regenerate, pot up, take stuff out of your Rhino or in, uh, Beast of Burden, turn on Revolution. Um, and this is actually quite hard to turn it on in time if you if the cutscene lasts and you can't get out of the cutscene. You only have like a couple of seconds at the end of the cutscene. But basically what happens is Araxi will spawn. She will do two attacks, two types of attacks. Um, one is a mage attack and one is a range attack. You basically need to protect from them. So I recommend that you don't do what I did here. So run away when she swipes. Let's try that again, shall we? So... Um, when you go to P4, all you need to do to start off with is to regenerate and then change to revolution, uh, pot up, um, take stuff out of your yak, uh, use your anti-poison and uh, get ready. I'd love to have um, prayer switches on my action bar, it makes it so much easier and then spam on food in my inventory. Um, so basically her attacks, there are two different attacks that she mainly does normally and she attacks a lot faster than any other boss, any other phase. Um, the mage one, as you see, is the yellowy acid spit, and the other one, the range one, is the web ball. Now, you can prayer switch, um, and it registers only when it actually hits you, as you can see. So, uh, you don't need to switch your prayer until the ball actually reaches you, and uh, at that point, you can uh, switch prayer and it will halve the damage. Now, um, she also does the special attacks that uh, from the other three phases, but she doesn't do the egg ball special attack. Um, and she only seems to do um, the shadow special attacks if the bottom path is open. If the middle path is open, then she doesn't do, she doesn't spawn the acid spider, at least from what I see. So if there's something different, please tell me. So uh, she does it much faster, as you can see. So um, her like standard special attacks, the swipe one, will be much more frequent than Araxor's one. So just watch out for that. Use anticipation or freedom every fifth uh, normal attack that she does so that you can avoid those, especially because your familiar might be in uh, low health by the time you get to this point because it would have been swiped by Araxor during the previous phases. So you don't want it dying on you at, in this phase. So just watch out for that. Um, and uh, yeah, Revolution should take care of the rest. Use Debilitate, use Devotion really helps and don't panic that is my number one uh, tip for this phase do not panic whatsoever it is really easy it really is uh, I know it's hard to do it but uh, maybe a few practices and you won't panic at 50k she'll stop using her special attacks and she'll attack much faster using her normal attacks and uh, when she gets to around 35k uh, you want to use um, uh, death swiftness and this will make it much easier for when the core spawns, the acid wave spawns, a bit like the corpse uh, core thing, I uh, forgot its name, uh, for when that spawns. Now, when, when she gets 25k, she will take off 50% adrenaline. So that's why you want to use uh, Death Swiftness before then. As you can see, the core bounces around twice, uh, five times before it actually reaches you. So you, there is no need to panic whatsoever, no need to run away. Just simply, as you can see, just stay in one place um, and then when she reaches 25k, use your adrenaline pot and then uh, simply cycle through your abilities. Use snapshot that will finish her off really quickly. So do not panic whatsoever. There's no need. The core will always bounce five times, five times before it reaches you. And when it does reach you, you want to move like one step or something and then it will bounce another five times before it actually attacks you. So there's no need to run around like a madman. Just take it easy and uh, you will be fine absolutely fine especially if you have death swiftness so uh, that's my tip and after she's dead you can collect your loot and leave there are other options you can use this is one i sort of tried to use and uh, sort of succeeded so basically i forgot to death swiftness and uh, happened to be the case that uh, the, i could just use snapshot and then run around slowly and not run around, just walk around the room actually, slowly and uh, just use my uh, one ability at a time, a bit like at the Ascension bosses and that worked out really well for me, so that's another option you can use. 
Thanks so much for watching guys and I really do hope this guide got you through your first kill and hopefully taught you lots about Arixor. You can check out some of the awesome rewards in the background but don't forget that the tactics will improve and change over time so this guide isn't a perfect one but I can't wait to see your reactions to the guide and suggestions for different methods. Happy scaping everyone!